It's full steam ahead for government's cruise berthing plans. Last week, Premier Alden McLaughlin announced the addition of Disney Cruise Lines to finance a project, making them the third cruise line to sign on. Tonight, Deputy Premier and Minister with Responsibility for Tourism, that is the Honourable Moses Kirkconnell, as well as the Chief Officer with Responsibility for Tourism, Strand Borden, join us live to talk more about the latest developments with that project. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Cayman 27 News. Thank you, Tammy. Good evening, Tammy. Deputy Premier, I'm going to start with you first because I understand we have the latest numbers for tourism. I would like to know how we are faring. Absolutely. Um, last year, we had the best year we've ever had, $2.3 million, $900 million spent into the economy without a multiplier effect. We were very concerned about how would we react this year, and we're very pleased that the January numbers are very impressive. Stayover is up 5.6%, and cruise was up 24%. So that's the best January the country's ever had. And when you, when you compare that to last year, which was the best January, best year, um, we think that we've really started the year off properly. When you hear numbers like that, people think, well, we're doing so well, why do we need to do the upgrade to the cruise berthing facility, which is looking at both cargo as well as cruise? We're doing well. Why, why fix something if it's not broken? That's the argument we're hearing. Well, it's a very good question, but, but let us realize that our tourism industry is one of the two pillars that we stand on, and we have to continue to refresh our product to keep current in the marketplace. We have very strong competition in the region. We have the highest daily spend, which is what goes to your gross domestic product um, in Cayman for the region. So that's what we want to continue to keep. So what that means is that the burden is for you to continue to improve your infrastructure, be the best in class and go out and understand how you market because because success doesn't happen by accident in the tourism industry mr borden let me ask you because obviously you are the civil servant arm of this project right you're hearing the concerns as well what do you say to people when they come up to you on the street about this what i say to them tom is that we're, we're managing the the project well we, we're on a timeline that we're sticking to we are managing the project in the sense that it is going to be a design, build, finance, maintain project. It's a triple P structure and that the, the government is not going to have to put up funds to build the project. And in the project as well, it's not only a cruise berthing project, but it's cargo enhancements, which we, we cannot forget because that is crucial to our continued growth as a country. The, the port um, has been in existence for a long time now. In terms of major upgrades, it has, it has not seen those for, for years and years. We've do, been doing patchwork, et cetera, maintenance on the, on the port. But to take the next step, this project will do that. And that's what I said. And talking about financing, because I think people have some questions about that. We've heard that we now have three cruise lines that are on board to finance a project. But then there was a question about that because and, and this is where I'm looking for clarification. The developer is going to give the money back to the cruise lines, and so there was a question about that. So what I think people are looking for is clarity on how the financing will work. Right, so, so Tommy, when we say it's DBFM, it's design, build, finance, maintain, right? So the financing portion is you have to have those funds to build it up front, yeah? But in any other, in a regular procurement, government would have those funds. So government is not putting up those funds. So we, we have cruise lines that are putting up those funds once the facility is built. They're not, they're not going to be willing to put it up until they have the facility that they can come and lay by to with their ships. So the money is coming after it's built from those cruise lines. Correct. So the developer is putting up the money first Correct. and then the cruise lines are going to put the money in after. Correct. There will be no impact to the public purse bottom line. Correct. So we're putting that to rest right here now. Yeah. So if I can just explain it as simply as possible, when a person arrives on a cruise ship, that cruise line will pay in to the company who has the license for the cruise berthing facility a certain amount of money. So as each person arrives, a payment is made and demanded. Let's talk a bit about the jobs that cruise tourism provides? Because I don't think any of us can f dismiss 
uh, the number. I understand it's something like 4,500 jobs are impacted. Is that number correct? 4,500 is, 4, is the number that has been used, and that's the number that the consultants came up with. Um, PwC obviously is best in class in, in business cases. Um, they're the ones that, that won the RFP for it, and they're the ones that have, have put the model together. And I want to make it very clear that when they did the modeling, it was understood that, that the Cayman Island government could not afford to upgrade and build a cruise birthing facility. But they modeled and showed the need, if we were going to stay into that business, the need for the birthing facility. And remember, this is 20 to 25 percent of our tourism product comes from cruise. All right. Jobs. Let's talk about jobs. Um, Drive out there in the morning and see how many Caymanians are there waiting on the cruise passengers to come ashore. Cayman kind is all over. When you look at how it trickles down, restaurants, tour operators, Turtle Farm, Pedro St. James, um, Eastern District is coming online, North Coast. So, Gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to continue this discussion. We do want you to stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are here with Deputy Premier. Moses Kirkconnell, as well as the Chief Officer with Responsibility for Tourism, Strand Borden. Gentlemen, thank you for staying with us. We were talking about the port. Uh, Deputy Premier, you were discussing the need uh, to make sure that those jobs are protected because people are reliant on them. Right. And I just want to quickly say there's a mix to the tourists that we bring here and how we approach that. So when you look at 20, 25 percent of your overall product is dependent on crews, you can't just not understand how you invest in it and how you continue to grow it. So the protection is twofold. You're going to have hundreds and hundreds of jobs when the port is being built. That converts into more opportunity, more visitors, and more people having jobs related to cruise. Future proof is the word that we hear often. And, and my understanding of what this project is supposed to do is to future proof the cruise tourism industry again there are people who say what we have is working there's no need to t to you know um fix something that's not broken there's the environment question but that need to future proof mr borden i want to ask you are you confident that this this plan as you have it will do just that yes i am so by having the cruise lines involved that future proofs it to use your terminology yeah because they're going to come in order to to pay back the funds that they have put up. And in terms of environmental impact, can you address that here? Do we see that becoming uh, mitigated more and more through the plan? Because we, don't have a, we, we haven't seen what the final plan is going to look like yet, right? We're not there yet. Correct. But the undertaking is that the environmental impact assessment will have to be updated. Any area that is going to be newly used has to be updated. Um, and then we work through the Department of Environment. And, and they run um, the vetting committee is, is the word I would use for it. But there's a coordinated effort between everybody to make sure as the, the um, design build comes back, public consultation, complete the business case, department environment involvement. And we, we, are, we spent a year going through to see if we could do this in deeper water and and we came back and found out that we could so the dredging pocket um, was smaller and and trying to explain that this is a, built on pilings and it's like a highway on top this is not a solid mass that's going into the sea and now speaking about the environment uh, the latest on the Barkas project if I may switch to, to that application that went before caucus. Uh, it's out there that government has made, a de or, the, or caucus rather, or cabinet, in fact, because that's where the application goes, uh, already has made a determination on it. But we received word from Dart Real Estate today that they had made a presentation to caucus and they had to meet with the Department of Environment and that meeting happened yesterday. From you, mm -hmm. because it's your words that, that, that is out there that, said, that gave the impression that it's a done deal, the application is greenlit. Is that the case? Where are we on this? Well, it was never my words. It was something that was twisted, um, and unfortunate. The, as, the application has never gone to cabinet. It came to caucus. Caucus made the decision that it would be prudent for both the Department of Environment and the developers to meet. 
and that was the recommendation from caucus. Um, they have met, is what my understanding is. There's a release that's being sent out um, that you've just mentioned, and, and what it basically says, what we said at caucus was that we're not comfortable with what the Department of Environment has shown us from an environmental standpoint. And we believe it would be very useful for these two entities to meet. Um, and we're fortunate that we have the ability to do that in a short period of time because they're all located here in Cayman and they were able to meet quickly. Because with the Barkers project, that's something that will also impact tourism, right? The, the idea is that cruise tourists will be able to go to that area. And of course, there is a concern there about the environment. Again, yet another instance where we have to balance the needs of the environment with the needs for development and the tourism industry. The key word there is balance. That, that is what is the way forward. And we have to make sure that the balance entitles the people opportunity. And we have to make sure we protect our environment because our environment is part of creating the opportunity. All right, gentlemen, I want to thank you for being here with us on Cayman 27 News for your insight. And no doubt we're going to be talking about both of those issues in the months to come. So thank, thank you for you. being here with us. Thank you. Yeah. Do stay with us because we will have more for you after the break.